Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video with me, Dr. V the Chemie. And in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about pressure. We'll talk about manometers, which are pieces of equipment that are re heavily related to pressure. And we'll talk about a couple of different equations related to manometers and pressure. So the first question is, what is pressure? Well, Dr. B, pressure is what I'm feeling right now because I have an assignment and an exam due this week. And those feelings are well warranted, but in the physical sense, which is what I'm looking for and what I'd like to, how I'd like to describe and define pressure, pressure is the force applied per unit area. And common units for pressure are pascals, where one pascal is equal to one newton per square meter. And when we deal with pressure, there's a lot of different conversion factors we can use to help us out when working both in the metric and the English or other unit systems. So for us, one atmosphere is one common form of pressure that we'll use is equal to 1.01325 times 10 to the fifth Newton per square meter, which as we've discussed is also, are also Pascals. That's equal to 101.325 kilopascals, as well as 1.01325 bar. And another conversion factor we've got is that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury at zero degrees Celsius, which is equal to 760 torr. And if we want to work with the English units, we also see that one atmosphere is equal to 14.696 pound force per square inches which we more commonly refer to as PSI. Now, in addition to these regular pressure conversion factors, some of the times we may refer to pressure in terms of a pressure head, where we're speaking in terms of the amount of the height of a fluid that would be displaced based on a pressure applied. So for example, one atmosphere is equal to 10.333 meters of water at four degrees Celsius, which is equal to 33.9 feet of water at four degrees Celsius. And that's also equal to 29.921 inches of mercury at zero degrees Celsius. And later in this video, I'll show you how you can relate one atmosphere to these different heights of fluid. Now, now that we've talked about pressure, we've defined pressure, there's a couple of different types of pressure that we should discuss which are absolute pressure, where absolute pressure is the total pressure with respect to a vacuum. And in a vacuum, the pressure is zero. In addition to absolute pressure, we also have gauge pressure, where gauge pressure is the difference between, in pressure between the total pressure, so the absolute pressure, and atmospheric pressure. And so if we're relating absolute pressure to gauge pressure, what we see is that P absolute is equal to P atmosphere plus P gauge. And, for, and just as another piece of information, atmospheric pressure at sea level is one atmosphere, which is 760 millimeters of mercury or 101.325 kilopascals. So with, now that we, we're dealing with pressure there's other pressure terms that come into play when we deal with fluids. For example, we may have a cylinder, a closed cylinder, and in the cylinder, we may apply a plug. And we're gonna assume in this case that it is a frictionless plug. And this is where the new, our, our next term comes in because we're looking at fluid pressure, where fluid pressure is the minimum force needed to keep a frictionless plug in place to prevent the fluid from emerging from this closed container. So we're, we're applying a particular force to this frictionless plug to keep it from moving. And this force is being applied over the cross-sectional area of the plug. So we would take the plug, look at the cross-sectional area of the plug, and our fluid pressure would then be that force applied to the plug divided by the cross-sectional area of the plug. And building off of this column filled with a fluid example, we've got another term for us, which is called hydrostatic pressure. And with this example, we've got another column. It's filled with a fluid. And we're going to assume that this column is not closed. It's, it's got a closed bottom, but the top is open and exposed to 
the the atmosphere and in this case it's going to have we're going to have a pressure applied to the top of my fluid and meanwhile we've got another pressure applied to the bottom of the fluid and if we're looking between the top and the bottom of the fluid you can see that the bottom of the fluid's got a lot more pressure applied to it because not only do you have the atmosphere the ambient or atmospheric pressure applied but you've got all that fluid on top of the all the fluid above the base of the column that's being applied to the very bottom and so our hydrostatic pressure is that pressure applied to the fluid at the base and in this case of the column so we're going to account and figure out what that pressure P so our hydrostatic pressure is at the bottom and so in this case our P is going to equal the pressure at the very top P naught plus something else and in this something else, we just as we discussed, it's that pressure of your fluid that's above the base of the column. So for us, what we'll need is we're going to need to figure out that weight of the fluid that's above the base of the column, and we're going to need to figure out that cross-sectional area. And so there's a couple of relationships we can use so that we don't necessarily need to get the cross-sectional area or the force, but it will work out to be that and I'll show you right now how that how that comes into play. So we're going to need the density of my fluid. We're going to need the height of my fluid. Because what we can do is we can take the density of my fluid. We can multiply it by gravity. And if we take the height and we multiply that by the density and the gravity, what that ends up becoming is a force per area. And so now that second term in our hydrostatic pressure equation becomes rho gh and i encourage you to check this out for yourself and prove to yourself that the units are going to work out and that it ends up becoming a force per area now with hydrostatic pressure we see that the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom is going to depend on two things the pressure at the top of the fluid and the density of the fluid now Continuing and building off of this example and the system, we're going to talk about pressure ahead. And this is now where we're relating to that those conversion factors I mentioned earlier that are in units of a height rather than pressure. So we're again going to have a, a column that's open at the top. And I'm going to take that hydrostatic pressure equation we just derived. So P equals P naught plus rho GH. Now with pressure head, what we're focusing on is the pressure of just the fluid. So we're assuming that in this system, there is no pressure applied at the top, and it's just the pressure of the fluid applied all the way to the base of the column. And so in this case, if we're looking at our hydrostatic pressure equation, we can eliminate P naught, it's gonna be zero. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, that height term and we're going to focus on it and we're going to modify it a little bit just so we can speak in terms of pressure head. And so we're going to now modify that equation to become P equals rho G pH, where pH is the head of fluid. And so now if we modify that equation, we can get, we and solve for just pH, pH is going to equal P over rho G. And this is now where we're going to relate that pressure head, so the height of a fluid, to atmospheric pressure. And so in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can get the pressure head of water, the one of 10.333 meters of water at 4 degrees Celsius, equal to one atmosphere. So what we do here is we're going to take that P and we're going to substitute in one atmosphere, but I'm going to use different units. I'm going to use 101,325 pascals just to make the unit conversions a lot quicker and for our density we're going to use as close as possible we're going to use the most decimals and significant figures as possible and same deal for gravity so if we substitute those values in what you see is you've got that pressure the atmospheric pressure in pascals we use for the density of water 999.972 kilograms per meter cubed 
Again, I'm trying to be as precise as possible so that we can actually get that conversion factor. And for density or for gravity, we use 9.80665 meters per second squared. And if you substitute and you and do this calculation by yourself, what you'll see is that your pressure head is 10.333 meters of water. And so this is how you, you would be able to relate your atmospheric pressure or whatever other pressure you're dealing with to the height of a fluid. Just beware that that height of fluid is really a height rather than a proper pressure. Okay, and so now we've got all these different things relating the, the pressure, uh, pressure and a fluid. And what we now, and another thing we have is a manometer, where a manometer is a device used to measure fluid pressure. So for example, I've got this manometer, and this one is called an analog manometer because it's a U-shaped manometer, and it's gonna use the balance of forces between the two different sides to measure the pressure of a fluid. So in this case, we've got pressure on one side, P1. We've got pressure on the right side, P2. And in this manometer, the pressure must be the same at any two points within a continuous fluid that are the same height. So in this case, that continuous fluid we're gonna look at is the blue fluid. And we're gonna look at a point where we're at the same height within the blue fluid. So for example, uh, a is right at that interface between my blue fluid and the cl uh, clear white fluid. And we'll look at point B, which is at the same height. And in this case, B is still fully immersed within my continuous blue fluid. And so now what we'll do is we're gonna do a pressure balance between the left and right hand side. So we're gonna look at the left hand side and we're gonna look at all the pressures there and we're gonna set that equal to the pressure on the right hand side because the pressure at point A must equal the pressure at point B. So if we reset the system, we're gonna to start to derive a general manometer equation. So looking at the left side, we've got P1 that's being applied. And so that's gonna be the first part in our equation. And then the next thing we have above part A that's applying pressure is fluid one. So we're gonna have density one, so row one, and we're gonna look at the height of that fluid, which we'll say is D1. And as we've discussed earlier, the pressure applied by a fluid is going to be rho one G times the height, which in this case is D1. And so that's gonna add the next term into our equation. And as you see, we've gone through all the different pieces on the left side that are contributing to the pressure applied at point A. And now on the right-hand side, we're gonna we're gonna look at all the different pressures. So on the right side, we've got P2 being applied. So that's gonna be the next term in our equation. And now as we keep going downwards, we're gonna see that we have another fluid. So we're gonna call it row two. And we're gonna look at the height of row two. And now we're gonna add the next term, just like we did before. So it'll be row two, G, D2. And from here, we've got that final fluid the manometer density fluid, and we're gonna look at the height of that fluid, and we're gonna add that term in as well. And that's gonna give me rho F GH. And now, since there's no other uh, places where pressure is being applied, we can call it a day, and we have now gener we have generated our general manometer equation. And with, with manometers, I'm just showing you one style, but there's a couple of different styles of manometers. So for example, you can have an open end manometer. And so as you see on the right side, that, that side is open to at the atmosphere. So you see that P2 is equal to P atmosphere. You also can have a differential manometer. So in this case, we're comparing the pressure on the left side to the pressure on the right side. And then on the, another manometer we can have is a seal end manometer where the pressure applied on the right side is zero because it's a closed end for the manometer. Now, with the differential manometer, you can actually apply a couple of different co concepts to it in order to simplify that general manometer equation and develop a, another 
but uh, another equation. So looking at the differential manometer equation, or rather looking at the differential manometer, we've got pressures applied at P1 and P2. We've got a couple of different fluids, row one, row two, and row F. And we, a couple of, we have a couple of different fluid heights. So we'll look at those. And I'm gonna pull in the general manometer equation like I had before. So in this case, we're going to, since we got row one and row two, we're gonna assume that those are the same fluid and we're gonna now make it a general term of rho. And so now that can, we're gonna apply that rho into my general manometer equation just to convert. And now we're gonna transform our general manometer equation. So we've got rows instead of row one and row two. So from here, what we can do is we can combine those rho g d terms and bring them to the left side. So that's now going to give me on the left side rho g d1 minus rho g d2. And if you look at my, the manometer on the left side, you'll see that the difference in height between D1 and D2 is H. So we can now transform that rho G D1 minus rho G D2 into rho G, well, rho G D1 minus D2. And then from here, we can convert that into an H and make it P1 plus rho G H equals P2 plus rho F G H. And now what we can do is we can start combining some terms so, so I can bring P2 to the left side and I can be, bring rho GH to the right side. And so from here, what I can do is I can, iso I can separate out the G and H. So I have on the right side, rho F minus rho times GH. And the final piece is that if the rho of your fluid is a liquid, or sorry, if rho F, so the continuous fluid in the manometer is a liquid and the other rows, so like for example, row one and row two are gases, you can consider rho negligible. And the reason why is because rho, or rather gases have a very low density compared to liquids. So for example, if you're having water as a continuous fluid, that's, dense, that's a density of about a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, whereas the density of a gas is about one kilogram per meter cubed maybe two kilograms per meter cubed. And so there's a lot of, there's a couple of orders of magnitude difference between those two densities. And that's why we can consider that density for the gas being negligible, as long as the fluid in the manometer is a liquid. And if that is the case, then what you see in the, the final form of this equation becomes delta P equals P1 minus P2, which equals rho F GH. And so that's everything for today on pressure, the manometers, and generating a regular, a general manometer equation, as well as a differential manometer equation. So thanks a lot for tuning in, and stay tuned for more videos.